liturgy of evening prayer is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 117. Page 117. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of light, and to be glorified through all the ages. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 49 and 53. Psalm 49 and 53, beginning on page 652 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 652. Hear this, all you peoples, hearken, all you who dwell in the world. You of high degree and low, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days? when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me. The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods and boast of their great riches. We can never ransom ourselves or deliver to God the price of our life. For the ransom of our life is so great that we should never have enough to pay. In order to live forever and ever, and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and the stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their home forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation. Though they call the lands after their own names, even though honored they cannot live forever, they are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who foolishly trust in themselves, and the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straightway to the grave. Their form shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their home. But God will ransom my life, he will snatch me from the grasp of death. Do not be envious when some become rich, or when the grandeur of their house increases. For they will carry nothing away at their death, nor will their grandeur follow them. Though they thought highly of themselves while they lived, and were praised for their success. They shall join the company of their forebears, who will never see the light again. Those who are honored but have no understanding are like the beasts that perish. Psalm 53, Psalm 5-3 found on page 658, page 658. 
The fool has said to his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. God looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is any who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless, all alike have turned bad. And there is none who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon God? See how greatly they tremble, such trembling as never was. For God has scattered the bones of the enemy. They are put to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Depart, go up hence, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it, and I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up! To a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will no, not go up among you, lest I consume you in the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man put on his ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. If for a single moment I should go up among you, I would consume you. So now, Put off your ornaments from you, that I may know what to do with you. Therefore the people of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from out Horeb on. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose up, and every man stood at his tent door and looked after Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the door of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the door of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship every man in his tent door. Thus the Lord used to speak with Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See if thou sayest to me, Bring up this people, but thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know you by name. And you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, show me now thy ways, that I may know thee and find favor in thy sight. Consider too that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If thy presence will not go with me, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in thy sight, I and thy people? Is it not in thy going with us, so that we are distinct, I and thy people, from all other people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do, for you have found favor in my sight, 
and I know you by name. Moses said, I pray thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you will stand upon the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Simeon, page 120, 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our next lesson is from the first letter of St. Paul to the church in Thessalonica. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our visit to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the face of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from error or uncleanness, nor is it made with God. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please men, but to please God, who tests our hearts. For we never use either words of flattery, as you know, or a cloak of greed, as God is with us. Nor did we seek glory from men, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse taking care of her children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For we, you remember our labor and toil, brethren. We worked night and day, that we might not burden any of you while we preached to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our behavior to you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you, and encouraged you, and charged you to lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Magnificat, page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our final lesson this morning is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus continues. 
Think not that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men also shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Apostles' Creed, page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quiet, through the mercies of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O oh God, the life of all who live in the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor in the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past, and humbly ask for your presence through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hour, through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted.
shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Oh,